Sessions and thank all of you for being here. Uh, first of all, I agree with Senator Sessions. I, I'm just glad the Democrats are actually putting a, a plan on, on the table so the American people can actually hold them accountable in terms of what their plan is for uh, really solving the fiscal situation of this country. Now, unfortunately, the plan's not very good. They'd add, like Senator Sessions said, it, it raises taxes by $1.5 trillion. You have to really look at what it does the first year, by the way, because that, that's a real acid test. I mean, is it going to actually start reducing the deficit the first year? Not exactly. It increases spending by, by more than $100 billion, depending on what you're comparing it against. It'll increase our deficit uh, compared to the CBO baseline by about $75 billion. So it's, it's simply not a serious effort, and it does not ever balance. It does not put this country on a glide path toward balance. And so my amendment's pretty simple. It just uh, would establish a, a, six, or a point of order, a budget point of order, on any budget that is voted on or, or a, a proposed that does not balance at least by the year 2023. Uh, now, let's face it, when I, when I talk to people back in Wisconsin or, or just <laughs> normal Americans, they really expect government to live within its means. They really expect us to balance our budget far sooner than just 10 years. So this is a pretty modest proposal here. And you know, I, I need to uh, uh, echo what uh, Senator Sessions was talking about, economic growth. Uh, we have created such a high level of uncertainty you know, such a lack of confidence because we don't have our fiscal house in order. And, uh, you know, I don't know, fortunately, a parent that would n willingly drive up their debt, max out their credit cards, with no intention ever of paying that debt off, but fully intending to pass that debt onto their children and grandchildren. You know, fortunately, I don't know anybody like that. Hopefully you don't either. But yet, collectively, as a nation, that's exactly what we're doing to our children. We are mortgaging their future. And people get that. And that's why our economy is growing so slowly. Uh, you know, we're, we're often accused of not wanting to have a balanced approach to deficit reduction. We, we want a balanced approach. We, we want to increase revenue of the federal government. But let me just quote a couple figures to basically detail how much more effective economic growth is than a punishing success tax increase. Just with the meager economic growth we've had from 2009 to 2012, revenue to the federal government has increased by $344 billion per year. If we were through incentivizing, celebrating success, uh, putting in pro-growth tax reform, reducing regulatory burden, return our economy to a normal economy like we had in 2007 when revenue was 18.5% of GDP, that would add another $435 billion per year in terms of revenue. That's how you get a real balanced approach. That's how you really get a lot of revenue in the federal government to actually bring down our deficits, start you know, stabilizing our fiscal situation, which is, to me, just critical. Global credit creditors have got to look at the United States and be confident that we've got this situation under control or else our interest rates start increasing. And that's really the debt crisis we're trying to avoid. If, if interest rates, which are right now held artificially low, if they start creeping back up to 30-year averages, like we had from 1970 to 1999 at 5.3%, that would add $600 billion per year just in interest expense. That would crowd out significant spending. So again, all we're asking is that the Democrats produce a budget you know, we're, we're thankful they finally put their fingerprints on a plan so the American people can hold them accountable. But please, produce a budget that will actually show balance within at least 10 years. It's a very reasonable request. So thank you. Okay. Um, uh, I, I, well, my guess is uh, Republicans are going to be happy to support what Ryan's doing. It actually balances after 10 years. It puts us on that glide path. Uh, there's a big difference here between the parties. I mean, Republicans have repeatedly passed budgets. We've been supporting those budgets with our votes. Now, I've been here now for a little more than two years. Prior to this markup in, in our budget committee, I serve on the budget committee, we'd never even voted on a budget. You know, since I've been here, and this is still true, Democrats in the Senate have not voted on a fiscal plan since I've been here. You know, the President has proposed two budgets since I've been here. They've received, it's been voted on three times in Congress, twice in the Senate, once in the House. The final vote tally is zero to 610. I mean, the budgets that the president proposed have been so unserious, not a member of his own party are willing to give it a vote. So again, from, from my standpoint, Republicans have shown their willingness to be held accountable by the American public. I, I hope the American people 
understand that. You know, if we're going to solve these problems, you know, what are the first couple steps in solving any problem? You have to first define the problem. You have to be honest with the American public. And then you actually have to admit you have a problem. And we haven't seen that from the Democrats. They, they really, they do not accurately describe the problem. And they're not exactly raising their hand and going, yeah, you know, we've got some real problems with Social Security and Medicare. Now, the president knows we have problems with Medicare. I was at the dinner where he admitted it. He said that the problem with Medicare is we pay in $1 as Americans, but we get $3 worth of benefits. But he also went on to say, you know, Americans don't understand that. So my challenge to the president, members of his party, and quite honestly, the news media is we have got to start educating the American public about the depth of these problems. And we have to start preparing them for the solutions. We've got to start laying the groundwork. And nobody is in a better position to do that than President Obama and, quite honestly, his allies here in Congress. So I am looking forward to... President Obama and the Democrats stepping up the plate, you know, not pulling the wool over the Americans' eyes, but actually being honest with them in terms of the severity and depth of these problems that we face. Statement, right. If you think a balanced budget is important. I, I think there's a lot of people that don't understand why balancing your budget, living within your means is important to economic growth. And the analogy I use is a family budget. I mean, if you as a family are in debt over your head, I mean, how can you grow your own personal economy? How can you increase your own consumption? And the answer is you can't because you have creditors beating down your door. I mean, that same economic model just scaled up to a nation state is true of the American economy. And so I, I think the differences between the, the two parties is Republicans are concentrating and want to grow the private sector, the productive sector, the private economy. That, by the way, is how you actually uh, make the middle class better off, whereas Democrats are all about it growing government. It's intrusion to our lives. Uh, and the result, quite honestly, they're growing the cost of government and the debt of government that is just simply unsustainable. So again, the debt, the fiscal situation is creating the level of uncertainty that is keeping our economy from moving forward. All of this spending, you know, purporting to help middle income Americans is harming middle income Americans. You know, we get accused all the time as you know, conducting a war on women or the middle class. I mean, nothing could be further from the truth. We share their goal of wanting a prosperous America where every American has the ability to, to, bu to build a good life for themselves and their family. Uh, we just recognize that it's the private sector that does that, not government. They want to grow government. We want to grow the economy. Senator, I'm going to ask you on that analogy. Um, during the last difficult economic years, what, how did PACUR, how did your company deal with debt? Did you take on more debt? Um, during the during the recession, and how did you carry that debt? I, I was fortunate when I went to school during my MBA program. I had a finance professor that uh, always preached, "Do not get into debt." He called it bondage. You know, he'd just be very dramatic about it. You don't want to be in bondage. I took that to heart. I mean, I worked all my way through college. I actually left college with seven thousand dollars in the bank. I have not never wanted to take on debt. I've I've taken debt on to expand my business, but then I paid it off as quickly as I possibly could. You know, our founders realized that taking on debt and passing on that on to future generations is simply immoral. I mean, the war that we're, we're really engaged in here is a war on our children, on future generations. I mean, it's simply immoral. Now, debt for capital, for capital goods, you know, things like infrastructure, that makes sense. But debt for current consumption, I mean, that, that is where we are robbing our children of their, of their future. We're robbing them of future prosperity and opportunity. And again, that, that's just immoral. It has got to stop. That's why we've got to put our nation on a glide path toward finally living within its means and balancing a budget. That's what both of our amendments would do. One more question. I guess I had answered that saying that, uh, unfortunately, a majority of Americans basically bought a bill of goods or were sold a bill of goods. They were told that if you make the rich pay their fair share and a balanced approach to deficit reduction, you know, it was implied that all would be well. Well, the president got his punishing success tax increase. You know how much money that's going to raise in revenue for the fiscal year 2014? $41 billion. Now, last year's deficit was $1,090 billion. So I think it's legitimate for us to ask, and I think for the American public to ask the president, okay, you got the tax increase part of your balanced approach. What's the other part of that balanced approach? What's your plan to save Social Security and Medicare for future generations? So yeah, I mean, the president won the election. But I think he won it basically on, you know, basically an economic policy that has no chance of success. Uh, it, it won't work. 
And so we really do need to see out of the Democrats and out of the president, what is that other part, I guess the 96% solution to his balanced approach of deficit reduction. We haven't seen that yet. All right. Thank you.